What's going on, everybody? It's Simple Sports back with another episode. Uh, got a little NBA talk for you today. Uh, I'm going to get my NFL stuff out of the way tomorrow uh, for sure. Uh, got a lot of stuff to talk about there. But I want to talk about the Kyrie LeBron situation and what I think of it. Um, give you my thoughts um, and how it compares with a lot of different situations and why I think Kyrie is going to have an outstanding year next year. Um, And I'm not going to say MVP winner, but I think he will be in that MVP conversation, like sort of like uh, Kawhi Leonard was this year. Like not necessarily that he's going to win it, but I think a lot of people are going to see that he is that dude this year. Um, And I'm going to talk about why uh, in just a second. Um, now I don't, I don't know if the cat or if the Celtics as a whole are good enough to beat the Cavs just yet. Um, I'll have to wait and see how they play together first so far. Um, and then, you know, as the season progresses, see if maybe they need to make any moves that will need to put them over the top or if they're good enough already, but that'll that'll come with time and information obviously as the season starts um but just looking at them on paper and what i see right now i don't think they're good enough to beat the Cavs. uh i think currently constructed i think that would go six games um but again that's way out in the future so that's not def- that's definitely not uh my final take on that um but anyway point being i want to talk about Kyrie Irving and what this situation reminds me of uh and there's quite a few of them first one i want to talk about is because of how closely related they are and how much they communicate actually in person um is Kyrie and Kobe and how those situations compare <clears throat> and so I think they get along so greatly because you have to look at Kobe's situation. When he was ready to part ways, it was I I my theory is it I think it when it all came down to it, I think one of the big reasons that he wanted Shaq gone uh was I think Kobe Bryant was smart, a smart enough guy. He's a smart enough player. Like, he's one of the all-time, you know, when you think IQ, he's one of those guys that you think of. Tim Duncan, Chris Paul, LeBron, you know, Magic, Larry. Like, he's one of those dudes as well. Um, and I think he's smart. I think he's smart enough to understand that he's trying to be – First of all, he's trying to be an all-time great. And when you're an all-time great, what happens? People talk about you, right? He wants to be mentioned. He wants to be talked about. And he knew, I think he understood, that there were a lot of people out there that said, well, Kobe only won because he had Shaq. And Kobe needed to end that conversation, right? How else do you... You know, if you don't ever validate the criticism that's coming from the people that are going to be talking about you forever, then like that's on you. And so I think he felt he needed to validate himself. Sort of. I don't I don't want to say validate himself like he was thought of as completely useless, but I think he just needed to, you know, put the period at the end. Um. Because I think everyone knew that he was a great player, great talent. Um, But I think, and still people do it to this day. It's, oh, well, he really only won two championships because he had Shaq for the other three. And I think that's very unfair because Shaq wasn't winning those championships without Kobe, okay? And he validated that. And I think anyone with common sense would agree with that. Uh, we saw Shaq before, and he had a good squad, and they lost. And he had talent around him. 
and they lost. So when he and then when he left LA, he had Dwayne Wade, who is very similar to Kobe Bryant. Uh, so Kobe had to go out and <clears throat> he had to go out and and validate himself and put himself in that conversation. And I think, much like Kobe, Kyrie is in a similar situation because LeBron James is an all-time great player. He will go down as one of the best players in NBA history. And so no matter what anyone did, like no one even talks about Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade is a three-time NBA champ, and it wasn't just because of LeBron James. Yes, LeBron obviously helps, but it wasn't just because of LeBron. Okay, Dwayne Wade came up huge in moments for them. Chris Bosh came up huge in moments for them. Ray Allen did. So they, like, it, it ain't like LeBron is just carrying everybody on his back. Like, uh, and again, he did at moments, but all the great ones did at moments. And all the great ones came up short at moments. So, point being, LeBron James dominates the conversation. And I was listening to Skip Bayless say this earlier, and he said it, and I understood what he meant. Like, LeBron James dominates the conversation. So if if it involves any point in time in which LeBron James was playing, you're going to come after LeBron James. Do you get what I'm saying? Who's the best player? LeBron. And then you can go from there. Who has the most points? LeBron. Who has the most 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 who has the most? Has the most? LeBron James. So if you and that's just the people that are going against LeBron James. Think about his teammates and the people he played with. They no one even like now when they talk about the finals in the playoffs, it's the Celtics against LeBron James. The Raptors against LeBron James. The Pacers against LeBron James. The Warriors against LeBron James. They don't even talk about anyone else. When LeBron first came to Cleveland, it was the big three. And you got to remember, it was, all, it was up until the Warriors, it was always the big three, big three, big three. And when he first came back to Cleveland, it was the big three. LeBron, Kevin Love, Kyrie. And what has it become over the last three years? LeBron and Kyrie. LeBron and Kyrie. And now it's just LeBron. And that's all people talk about is LeBron. And my point is, it doesn't matter how great Kyrie was right alongside LeBron James in 2016 when he also dropped 41 points. It Like, that doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter when Shaq went out and Kobe had to carry the Lakers home. He had to pick up the baton on that anchor or on that fourth leg. Don't worry, I got this. When LeBron James had 11 points against the Celtics and it actually looked like that might become a series and Kyrie Irving carried him home, nah, that, that, that doesn't matter because, well, he had LeBron James on his team. And LeBron James, as Skip Bayless said, dominates. He dominates. Think about the reason why Jimmy G is finally saying, all right, man, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, get, up, get on up out of here. I understand he's, you know, he's great, but uh, I'd, I'd like to get out there on the field too. And that's not obviously to not diminish Tom Brady because I don't know if you saw that throw he made Sunday to Brandon Cooks. But listen, I didn't play at the professional level, but uh, that throw was (laughs) that was. And that's impossible. I can't even fathom that how you make that 
Like, I don't even understand. I'd be lucky enough to throw it into the end zone. But we'll get to that tomorrow. Um, my point is, Jimmy G's like, look, man, I, I get it. Tom Brady's great, but, like, I'm, I'm ready. You know, I'm ready to go. And you look at, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you pick a sport. Pick any sport. Like, that's just, that's how it is. If you're under a great player, it doesn't matter what you do. Like, they're going to get the recognition. Look at any other superstar pairing. Look at any Batman and Robin in the NBA. Just just the NBA. Dwayne Wade doesn't get the love that he deserves because he had LeBron James for two of his rings. And he had Shaq for the other one. Now, he was phenomenal in the first one, no question. But my point is, he, he has three rings, okay? Right alongside LeBron James. So, it ain't... And, yes, LeBron was on his team. But, like, he's no scrub. So, where does he fit in that conversation? It just get overlooked because, again, you have LeBron James on your team. Kobe and Shaq, like I said, Shaq was seen as 1A and Kobe was 1B. And he was like, hold up, wait a minute. Like, I I can do this, okay? Randy Moss with Chris Carter. Like, wait a minute, hold up, I, I, I can do this too now. Now, Randy Moss wanted to do his own thing. And he was saying, hey, look, and I listened to CeCe talk about it. He's like, look, man, hey, man, like, I want to do my own thing, too. You look at someone like Clay Thompson, and in the future, I'm not saying he would, but in the future, maybe he, he, he might, he might say, hey, look, like, KD's here, Steph is here, but I was doing this before KD got here, it was me and Steph, and I was still overshadowed, now I'm just like, a ghost. I'm Casper over here. I'm I'm recognized as part of the big four, but all the talk is is Stephen Clay, or Stephen KD. And Clay might say, "Look, I, I want to go and and reclaim some of my my shine." Again, I I don't I I actually don't think he would. I think he's good. I think he knows what he has, and and I think he'll be good. Um, but I'm just saying that could be. A potential one. And you can even look at players who didn't win championships or didn't win as many as they probably should have. Look at someone like KG. People forget, like, KG was that dude in Minnesota. And they went to war with Kobe and Shaq. Now, I don't know. Like, the team as a whole wasn't, they weren't ready for that, but. KD or KG was that dude okay and look at someone like Melo Melo you gotta remember I think was it in 09 I think the Nuggets back in in 2009 went six or seven games with the Kobe led Lakers Melo and uh and who's the coach was it George Call George Call um So, like, who's to say Melo back then wasn't that dude good enough? Because a lot of people don't think he's that guy that could carry a team. They went to the Western Conference Finals. He went head-to-head with Kobe and was giving them the business in the Western Conference Finals. And I think they went six. I'm I'm pretty sure they went at least six games. It might have been seven. I think it was six, though. And he didn't get a championship because of Kobe. In my eyes, I think if it wasn't for the Lakers that year, I think Melo and the Nuggets would have won the chip. But that's that's just me. But he doesn't get talked about because he's overshadowed by someone who he played against in his prime that was just simply better than him in Kobe Bryant. So Melo doesn't get, in my opinion, the respect he deserves, especially for those early years. Now, I know things this recently have been... Little ugly, but those early years, 
you got to think about it. He got drafted in 03. So in six years, a lot like LeBron, LeBron went to the finals in 07. And then he went to the Eastern Conference Finals. But Melo went to the Eastern Conference Finals too. And uh, honestly, if it wasn't for Kobe, I think they would have won. You, I, you don't think the Nuggets that year could have challenged the Magic? Come on, man. I think they could have. So Melo doesn't get talked about because of Kobe Bryant and, and LeBron James. So I, I, my point is, I think Kyrie is smart enough to understand that no matter what he does for his career, no one's going to validate him as one of the all-time greats in any capacity because LeBron James was his teammate. You know, it's – and I don't think that's fair, and I think he made the right decision. I think we're going to see – Kyrie become a different player and I think we're going to see Kyrie show that he can compete at the highest level along with everyone else and he's young and he just got a good teammate they got they got a lot to work with um, they definitely need some work you know they need some help for sure but they have a lot of pieces there in place to to make some noise um I think, again, I think Kyrie is going to be mentioned a couple of times as an MVP candidate. Um, I don't know what his numbers would be like. I think he'll be somewhere around the 25, 26 point per game. I think he'll, I don't know about rebounds and assists. I think he'll get, um, I think he'll get an additional three to four assists and maybe two rebounds uh i think he's gonna have a really really good year though i really do um and like i said i think we're gonna see that i think part of this departure is he wants to show that he can win without lebron james and it might be a slightly unfair comparison i guess because if you think about it, he's going to obviously outlast LeBron. He's got 10 years left. He's only, what, 25? He's got 10 years left. LeBron ain't playing for 10 years, okay? So, if if nothing else, if, Le, like if LeBron, even if LeBron James happened to play outstanding for another four years, I mean, that puts Kyrie at 31 in his absolute apex when LeBron leaves the league. So he'll be able to do his do his thing. But I think he said, because you got to think, and Skip Bayless said this as well. Like, you got to think, he didn't leave LeBron as far as competition. He literally went to the team that they are going to meet in the Eastern Conference Finals, most likely. One of them would be the one or two seed. I don't know who would be which one. Probably the Cavs. I think they have a better roster this year to not lose some of those games when LeBron rests. Um, not lose as many of them, I should say. Um, so, I think the Cavs are finished first, Celtics second. And I think they'll both – I think the Celtics at, will have a tougher time, but I think they'll both pretty handedly – blow through the east and then now nah, that's i tell you what next year i'm definitely going to watch more basketball uh because i am ex- i'm pretty excited to see the only thing that i want to see now in the east is the celtics and the Cavs. because if he would have gone anywhere to the west then i it would just been the Cavs, and that would have been it there would be no discussion whatsoever like it would even be a need to have the season you just put them in the finals and do something in the West and have a tournament or something because it's it's a joke, really. Um, but so I'm excited to see that him go head to head with LeBron James. And you also have to think about this. Could you imagine if Kyrie goes to the Celtics and they actually do beat the Cavs? And I said this right when 
Kyrie, you know, first got traded and all that stuff, like right or right when it first came up, like right after the finals. I mentioned, you know, when this whole thing started, I said, could you imagine if he actually did beat LeBron? Do you know how? Think about this. Think about how insane of a boost that's going to give Kyrie Irving and how much of a hit LeBron could actually take. So first, let me talk about Kyrie. Kyrie comes out and says, I didn't want to play with this dude. I want to get out from underneath him and do my own thing. It's tough playing with LeBron James. It's not all it's cracked up to be. You guys don't see everything. I know what it's like. Get me out of here. And LeBron James, as passive aggressive as he can be at times, and as critical as everyone has been of Kyrie Irving, of why would you leave LeBron James? He's the greatest player in the world. And then he comes out the very next year to his rival team and beats LeBron James after he just got beat by KD and the Warriors in the finals. Then he comes out and his Robin beats him and doesn't let him get to the finals, ending that amazing streak that he's on. And everyone is like, wait a minute. The dude that everyone said was your Robin came out and beat you? So you're telling me the whole time y'all had on the wrong uniforms. That, And I'm not saying that that's necessarily true, but that's what a lot of people, that's the perspective a lot of people will take. Like, that would, Twitter would break, Instagram would break, YouTube, everything social media related would break the night that Kyrie Irving in 2018 beats LeBron James in the playoffs. It would, it, it, we would probably go into Armageddon. Especially if it was like a game seven, like in Cleveland, or it, I guess it really wouldn't matter where. And LeBron James had the ball and it's tied up and he misses a jumper. And then Kyrie gets the rebound, comes down the court and drills it. Like, I think Earth would come to a standstill. Like it would. (laughs) Could you imagine? Oh, my goodness. Maybe I'm going crazy, but that's when I thought about that, that was the first place my mind went to. So I think we're going to see a different player in Kyrie Irving coming up this year. And I think I'm actually, for once in probably about five or six years, I'm actually excited for basketball, for NBA. I haven't been excited at all. Um, I, I, now I get pretty pumped for the playoffs and obviously the finals. I will, I'll watch every single game except this past year. I didn't watch every game of the playoffs. It was just unwatchable. Um, but prior to that, I watch every game, but this is the first time I've been like really, really, really excited for like the beginning of the season. I want to be a part of it from beginning to end. Because I didn't even get to the West yet with that trade with Melo to OKC, who I think, well, I think they're on a collision course with the, with the Warriors in the finals, in the, in the West finals. Um, and I don't think, I think they're in a similar situation. I don't think they're quite there yet. I think they're closer to beating the Warriors than the Celtics are beating the Cavs. Uh, But I don't think they're... I think that's a seven-game series, but I think the Warriors close it out in seven. And that's the truth. Because I think Melo has not only... First of all, I think Melo is in... I think Melo's in a great state of mind in terms of... I think he has... I think he's ready to embrace winning and being a champion... And I think you're getting not only that, but a motivated Mello because he wants to. I don't know if he looks at it 
as deeply as a lot of other players do, but I think he does feel a little bit of pressure to win a title, even if it's just one, or even if it's just getting to the finals. I think he does feel a little bit of pressure on that. And so I think you're going to get a motivated Melo, along with obviously Russell Westbrook and Paul George. I think that's a seven-game series. Because if you give me that three versus Steph, Clay, and uh, KD, they have the ov- I think they have the overwhelmingly better player, obviously, in KD. But those other three, compared to Steph and Clay, like that's three that you can throw out there. So we'll see. That's going to be pretty exciting to watch. I think the Rockets are going to be a, a disaster. I think it'll be great for stats and great for TV, but I think when it gets to the playoffs, I think they're going to meet the Warriors this year, and I think it is going to be a... (laughs) First of all, it's going to be like 180 to 160. Like, it's going to be run and gun, and I think it's just going to be a disaster against the Warriors because I don't think those two are going to work. I don't think it's going to be bad, like a negative situation. I just don't think on the court it's going to work. I just don't see it happening. And then you got the Spurs who are just, I think, are, I, I don't really know what they are. I I don't see them as competitors for the championship. But I don't want to rule them out either. Like, I never want to. You, you just don't count the Spurs out. Like, you just can't. Because the second you do, they'll, they're will they going to go win the title. It's just. That's just the way they are. I, but I don't. I don't think they could beat. I think the only team out of the Warriors, the, the Rockets, and the Thunder. I think the only team that they can beat is is the Rockets. I don't think they can beat the Thunder or the Warriors. So next year is going to be pretty exciting. As I said, I think Kyrie is just ready to be that dude, plain and simple. I think he's ready to, like I said, like Kobe, like a lot of these guys who have had to step up or want to step up and be that guy, um... I think Kyrie is in that situation, much like Kobe Bryant. And I think that's why they get along so well. I think Kobe, a lot more than a lot of other things, I think he wanted, I think he knew, it was like, look, man, I want to be one of the best ever. And I'm never going to get that as long as Shaq is here. Just not. Kyrie wants to be, I don't even, and I don't even know if he wants to be the best ever. I don't even think he wants to be, well, I don't want to say he doesn't want to be. I think he... I don't think it's that far for him. I just think he wants the credit he feels he deserves. And I think he's never going to get that as long as LeBron James is his teammate. He's never going to get that. Ty Lu will never in his life get credit for being a great coach unless he goes on to do phenomenal things. Eric Spolstra will never get the credit he deserves unless he goes on to do phenomenal things and it has all to do with LeBron James now Spolcher right now and Ty Lue right now are seen as a great coach but over time let's say 15 years from now they haven't won another ring no one's going to consider them a great coach like an all-time great? No. Now, let's say 15 years from now, and Eric Spolstra has another f- four rings, and Ty Lue has another three. Then, th- th- that's when they'll get that credit. And I think a lot of players have been put in those situations. And I think Kyrie is in that situation currently. Jimmy G is in that situation. He's like, all right, I'm, I'm ready because... To go do my thing, man. Like, I want to do this. 
So that's all I got to say about Kyrie and the NBA. We'll put that to bed for now. Unless something else drastic happens, this was just kind of the first look we had into what LeBron and Kyrie have been thinking. We've got to put them both together and analyze it. So unless something else like that happens, um, obviously we'll be gone for the NBA for a while. But tomorrow, as I said in the beginning, I'll have my – NFL recap and also looking forward into next week. I was very impressed with my Titans beating the Seahawks. Finally, I I shouldn't even say finally. They actually had two good wins last year. They beat the Broncos and they beat the Packers, uh, which Packers wasn't, I guess, that great of a win. But, hey, whatever. Um, And then they come out this year and they beat the Seahawks early in the year. Now, if they would have beaten the Raiders, and I was looking at their schedule and it's not because I'm going to talk about this really quick. It's not because I'm a Titans fan at all. Um, but I was looking at their schedule and I was being extremely objective and trying to see realistically when would be the next game they would lose. Just from my opinion. So they lost to the Raiders, beat the Jags, beat the Seahawks. And I was looking at the schedule and I was like, when would be the next game they would lose? And it would be, in my opinion, let me look really quick. Um, I think they might lose to the Ravens. So that they're currently two and one. I think they beat the Texans. I think they beat the Dolphins. I think they beat the Colts and the Browns. And then they play the Ravens at home. And I think by then the Ravens will have fixed their problems. And I think they're going to be kind of on the edge as it is. And I think they're going to really, really need a win. And Tennessee is definitely a team to drop the ball when they don't need to drop the ball. Um, at that point, they would be two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, now that I look at it, I don't think they would lose at home to the Ravens. I do think they would lose the following week to the Bengals. So I think they'd drop two straight. So, okay. I think, let me adjust a little bit. I actually think they don't lose to the Ravens. I think they beat the Ravens. I think they lose to the Bengals, and I think they drop two straight. Okay, so I think... By the time they play the Bengals, it'll be 7-2. and two. I think that's real. Okay, they beat the Texans, Dolphins, Colts, Browns, and the Ravens. I think that's, I think that's real. So they go 7-2. and two, And then I think they drop to the Bengals at home and to the Steelers at home back-to-back. They actually play 1-2. No, I'm sorry. They play back-to-back home games. Then they go to Pittsburgh. And I think they lose both of those games. So that makes them seven and four. I think they beat the Colts eight and four. I think they dropped the game at home to the Texans eight and five. And then I think they went out from there. Cardinals, 49ers, Rams, and Jags. Now, tell me objectively that that doesn't seem real. I know I'm a Titans fan, but tell me that doesn't. I'm not saying it happens in that order, but tell me 11 and 5 doesn't sound realistic given what I just explained. The Texans, although they played great, we're not sure what Deshaun Watson is. Miami, they started the season late, I guess you could say, um, for one. So they might still be a little rusty. So they are a little up in the air. We don't, a lot of people think they would, thought they would have been good. They don't appear to be that good. Um, but we'll see. The Colts are a mess right now, and somehow they they picked up a win. <laughs> uh, the Browns are getting better, but they're not there yet. The Ravens appear to be a mess. I personally think that they'll be better by then, but as I look at the roster, I don't think they'll be able to stop us on offense. Um... And I think our run defense will be able to contain them. 
and our pass defense isn't great, but I don't think Joe Flacco is going to be able to beat them up and down the field. And I think that would be a higher scoring game than either team is really used to. Now, Tennessee, as of late, has been great on offense. In fact, I think they're fifth this year so far. Um, I just don't think the Ravens can keep up. I do think they then drop to the Bengals because that, that, that Bengals defense is no joke. Um, you can say what you want about Andy Dalton in the offense, but that defense is is no joke. Um, and then I think going to Pittsburgh with that offense is tough. We'll see. I might have to change that one to a win because if Pittsburgh keeps playing the way they are now, it is not going to be good. Um, and they could pick up that win. Um, I think they beat the Colts in Indy again. Unless Andrew Luck has come back by that point and is outstanding and it's just too late. Um, but if he's great, then they might drop tech that game. That might be my flip-flop. Is Instead of they lose to the Steelers, they lose to the Colts. Um, but we'll see how Andy, or Andy Dalton, Jesus Christ, Andrew Luck is playing by then. Um, and I think they beat the Texans again. Uh, I think they beat the Cardinals. And they beat the 49ers, Rams, and Jags. Um, I think the only I think out of those last couple of games that I just said, I think the only team that actually give them problems are the Cardinals and the Rams, um, specifically in secondary. Um, now the Rams more with their pass rush because Aaron Donald, let me tell you, that dude is unblockable. You cannot block him. He is dude. He is a monster. Um, and the Cardinals' pass defense is. Top notch, um, for the most part. They struggled a little bit last night against the Cowboys, but I think I think they'll be fine defensively. I think they'll be just fine um, for the rest of the year. Um, and the the Titans, although they have gotten way better at passing the football, um, I don't think they're quite where they need to be to be elite in the passing game. Um, but I, they don't need to. They average what? I think so through three games, I think they're averaging like 170 yards rushing, 160 yards rushing, something like that. They're, I think they're second behind Kansas City. Uh, so obviously they don't lean on the passing game. Um, so I think 11-5 and five is real. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. I have talked way too long. Peace out.